loss, drama, rebellion. No, optimism. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> Empathy. Okay. Okay. Empathy. There we go. Optimism. Riches. This is what we're talking about for today. Um, I, uh, I have some, some new tarot cards, so I'm going to unbox them. And I'll put a link in the comment section below if you want to skip over this part and just skip right to the reading. I got the Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice tarot and guidebook. It was at the... Um, we've got a place in town in Tucson, Arizona called Bookman's. And I love Bookman's. They sell new... Oops, sorry, sorry. They sell new and used books. And I don't know why this plastic is always difficult. All right. We shall toss the plastic in the pocket for now. All right. Inside edition. Based on the hit film. Sometimes these like cartoon kind of these movie decks are not the best, but I love them anyway. <laughs> the little book is fun. It's sideways. Oh, sideways and upside down, so it all... Cool. All right. Not easy to reference, but maybe you can, I don't know, lay that out on your table if you get this deck. Hello, Skiriko. Lady Cat. Gaga. Queen of Sheba. Oh, the fool. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Let's shuffle up this bad boy. The Eight of Wands. Messages coming through. Oh, I like this deck. This deck, sometimes the pip cards in these, like, um, movie decks. I don't know what to call them. Hollywood. Commercial. Hallmark decks. Sometimes the pip cards are really boring. And they're just like... Eight wands flying through the sky. In this one, it looks like there's some fun pictures. All right, today is candle making day. Yay! All right, and you know it's um, it's an interesting thing because before I sat down, I got the very distinct impression that spirit would like to tell, would like for me to tell you a story, and and the, I guess I'll just tell you the story. So. Many years ago, I moved to Bogota, Colombia, and I moved there because I met, look at that, the smoke. This candle has gone out. See, it's time to make, no, it's not. It's still burning. Okay, so many years ago, I moved to Bogota, and I moved there because I was dating a Colombian gentleman who I met in Connecticut. He was had graduated from Yale University, and he had a PhD in economics, and this guy, <laughs> He was a bodybuilder. I'm not like that. Like, I don't exclusively date gorgeous people or bodybuilders, that sort of thing. He just happened to be a bodybuilder. And <laughs> I'll skip over all of the details. Uh, I moved to Colombia, and uh, we had our love affair, our adventure, and things eventually did not work out. And I left Colombia, and I came back to the United States. And... I sort of put him in the rearview mirror. In, in some ways, he broke my heart. I broke his heart. There were hearts broken, and I let it go, and I worked really hard to let it go and move on. And so then a few years later, after I'd like sort of long forgotten about him, more or less, his energy started coming around me, and it was like it was just constant. I was thinking about him every day. It was this really weird experience, and I was like, why is this guy... And I'll tell you, his name was Raphael, and I think that that's important to you. That's a name that may speak to you, and um, it's, you know, the Archangel Raphael. It's a beautiful name, and um, that was his name. And so his energy just came back to me and started surrounding me, and I was like, no, no, no. I was like, do I need to do some cord cutting you know, meditate on all of this, let it go, do some kind of a ceremony of burning. And then eventually it was on my mind so strong that I like sat down and went on to the internet and was like, okay, Raphael, where are you? What is happening with this person? And turned out he had died. He passed away. And it was right about the time that he passed away that his spirit really started coming back to me very, very heavy, hardcore and it was as though, uh, like, the, the message was that, I, I don't know, I'm yours, I love you, I'm here with you. And I felt as though I was having a love affair with a dead person. And for some reason, that may speak to you. There's something coming back. It, didn't, it never really did leave. Um, and I feel like it's in... 
Yeah, the, the candle is still lit. So for some of you, this is about a love affair. Probably it's for all of you a love affair. But um, there's also touching on other aspects of life. And so let's go ahead and start with these oracle cards. The oracle of the radiant sun. We've got optimism, wants to stay out here on the table. Do you see the smoke from the candle? The candle wants to go out. But it wants to stay lit. And if I just move the, the wax away, it will stay lit. And this is a definitely treasure on the other side of the rainbow candle. It's like uh, love, money, abundance, peace, joy. All of, the, all of the things are all wrapped into this candle. And for some reason now it's coming through. Like if you don't focus on any one thing, then nothing gets all of the focus and everything just gets a little bit of a tinge hmm, i don't know all right so let's see a couple more cards cool so we've got like I, I showed you already optimism it's coming out in the reverse and we have exaltation comes out in the reverse exalted and enthusiasm I, this is a, people are looking at you and they're like okay who are you? What are you taking? What are you on? How is it that you are managing all of this despite everything that has come at you in this lifetime? Rebellion and flirtation in the reverse. This is the number 11. There's Gemini energy for sure here. Whee. This is when I wish that I had a better grasp on astrology. Is this Aquarius, this symbol? I'm pretty sure. I think that's Aquarius. It's a, I think, air sign. Could be water. Um, <laughs> I love, I'm, I'm actually really loving this feeling. I feel like you are a rebel. And you're like, screw you. Screw this whole thing. I'm going to do me. I'm going to make me happy. I'm going to please God. I'm going to please the spirit. Um, you know, God being the old white man, for some reason that's been coming through these readings, and spirit being the more feminine, perhaps darker, more mystical shadow aspect of the spiritual. And, and then there's the, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, is that, and the Holy Spirit. There's God the Father, the Son would have been Jesus Christ, and then the Holy Spirit is like a ghost. With that is obviously the female aspect of the Spirit, if God is the male aspect. I don't know. All right, so let's see what's happening here with the tarot. And thank you all for being here. Thank you for uh, tuning in, for watching. You guys, I love your comments. I love your energy. Just, it's all, it's all love. So we've got the Knight of Wands. And I'll show you these cards because they're cool. And this guy, the Knight of Wands, comes out in the reverse. It's the Sand Shark. Did you guys see Beetlejuice 2? The Queen of Wands. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, what is she working on? She's working on something. It's a candle. No, it's some kind of something that she has planted. It's the magical bean that you're finally harvesting from the earth. Keep looking at my face and I'm like, I need, I need, um, lip, lip, lip color. Ace of swords. Yeah, clarity. New opportunity. The brand new, yay, coming in. Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin's character. This is like the Beetlejuice, the first movie. Overall card for the reading, the nine of swords. It's really nice that these pip cards are not just like nine little swords. You know, that's the door that you don't know what's going to happen if you step out that door. Strengths for today. The Page of Pentacles in the reverse. Weaknesses are what you want to avoid for today. The Three of Cups in the reverse. And unexpected incoming surprises. The Seven of Cups in the reverse. This card wants to come. And the Six of Swords in the reverse. Okay, so there's no major arcana coming out. So I feel like this is not really a big deal. This is the, just the little things, the little parts of life. You're crowding me, Tree. The little, the smaller parts of life, the dealing with the daily, day-to-day -to -day stuff. Um, somebody, it's as though somebody feels that you, somehow you stepped outside of the matrix. 
or you recognize the matrix for what it is. It's scary. I feel like, um, somebody got involved. Okay. So this is the, what's coming through. You got involved with somebody, somebody got involved with you and they saw you as somebody who was fun and strong and really adventurous, but not that much of a, a force to be reckoned with, if you will, to be honest, they didn't think that you were going to be like solid or steady or stick around very long. Turns out not only are you solid and steady and sticking around, it seems as though you're some kind of exalted creature. You're some kind of I don't know, what are you? <laughs> and I do get this sense that people are looking at you like, who, what, what are you? How did you do that? How did you do that? And you're like, it's none of your damn business. <laughs> I'm going to keep on doing it. There's a bit of a sense here too of like, it's almost an I told you so. I tried to tell you that I have magical powers, that there's something very wrong with this situation around us. You know who it's given? It's giving that, I want to call him Melchizedek. I, I don't know. I don't, I, I'm pretty sure, I, I don't know what his name was, but there is a character in Jewish literature where I think it does start with an M because Melchizedek, Melchizedek, Melchizedek wants to come through and it wanted to come through three times like Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. So this is a Melchizedek reading. So we all may want to go and do some reading about Melchizedek and what it is that we're working on at this time. Um, oh, I just, I didn't lose it. I didn't lose it. Yes, there's this sense where you're like, I, I told you, oh, it's the guy who he came in and everybody sees him as being crazy and maybe he's wearing like a sweatshirt and he doesn't have any lipstick on and he's no jewelry and is like, you don't look like someone, you don't really sound like someone who is an oracle or you're not really coming across as somebody who can be trusted because you're very excited. Um, but there was this character who went into someplace in Germany and was like, the Nazis are coming they're going to kill you. You need to get out of here now. And the people looked around and they were like, it's a bright, beautiful, shiny, sunny day. School is in session. Work is in session. The banks are open. You're insane. And it's just not possible what you're talking about because everything that's going on right now is beautiful. You're insane. And then what happened? The Nazis showed up and all of the people who didn't believe that soothsayer, the fortune teller, the oracle, who didn't look like somebody who should be paid much attention to because they didn't believe him, they did end up getting carted away on trains and, and suffering through hell on earth. And all of those things, it's not bad or good. It, it ha that happened because that happened. We now know that that's possible. And we now know that we have to be on high alert. <laughs> no, mama. Don't show them your butt. You... Hi. Hi, you going to give love? Do you guys hear her purring? Um, so, yeah, they, they didn't believe the guy when he said, you need to be on high alert. There's a massive problem here. They didn't believe it. And now they're coming to you because you're, you're like that character in this story right now. And now they're coming to you and they're like, wait, what was that? What was that that you said you told us that what was going to happen? And you're like, <laughs> it, there's the, a sense here of um, like they burned you at the stake. It was even worse than them telling you you're a fool and you don't know what you're talking about. It was much more like they put you down. They tried to step on you. They tried to silence you. They didn't like what you were saying. And so they were like, mute that. Bitch. And you were not muted. They probably, like, I don't know, they turned off their radio. They turned off that channel. You kept on talking. It's not that you stopped talking. They stopped listening. And that didn't matter. Because I feel like you're in this energy now where you're like, I, I you're, there's this energy here of ex extreme confidence extreme self-knowledge there's a lot of mystical powers surrounding you at this time with the queen of wands it's fire it's water it's a, it's magical she is a, a magical creature she's attractive she's magnetic you're like you know what this is me i know who i am if you recognize me awesome and if you don't recognize me bye bye felicia bye get out of here you're gone um You earned this. You fought for this. You you earned it and you fought for this. And now you are... 
somebody is needing to accept <laughs> they, they have to accept you as you are they have to accept that you are some kind of an oracle you do have some kind of a channel some kind of a phone line direct to spirit and you are you know exactly what you're talking about and it doesn't matter if they believe you or if they don't believe you you believe you and that's bringing you to this place of um it's it, there's massive movement forward there's a new beginning it's a little bit it's it's highly discerning it's working with people who that works for you and it's not working with people who that doesn't work for you right now however don't be breaking up with people don't be backing out of things um if you've made an agreement to do something don't back out of the agreement it is your strength right now to not be quite sure whether that was a good idea or a bad idea there's also somebody who is looking at you and they're trying to figure you out and they can't figure you out and that is your strength at this time <laughs> that's really weird because your strength is that there is a manipulator Ooh, weird it, I, it's weird it be, it's like if you are the soothsayer the homeless soothsayer in the street the strength is the fact that you have something to say. The strength is the fact that there is a manipulator, a liar out there, and that means that you have something to say. You have news to share with the world. You're going to explain to them. You're going to teach them. And now it comes through. There's this guy one time who was a complete, like, the, one of the most nauseous people I've ever come across in my life. To really, Literally, this is a person who I don't even want to say what they tried to do to me because it was just so gnarly <laughs> but they try I, they tried to just completely destroy my reputation by trying to paint me in the colors that they wear on a daily basis but he did have a t-shirt that said um something about I can't understand it for you right I can tell you what it means and I can tell you what it's saying but I can't understand it for you the you seem to be in that energy right now and so I like it's a little bit severe or something but it's not really severe with the rebel card coming out here it's you knowing that you're dealing with someone who is toxic like that person who tried to destroy me destroy my reputation and accuse me of doing everything that he was actually doing it was really 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 toxic really gross and he had support ultimately he did come out the loser <laughs> can you tell him <laughs> like <laughs> i don't like when people do that what they tried to do so the king of wands the king of cups in the reverse you're dealing with someone like this five six seven of wands in the reverse the knight of swords in the reverse this is also cute brand new tarot deck these were used it's just called tarot the complete kit and i love it i just i really do it's it's a lovely cute little deck two of cups yeah coming together um you dealt with someone who is afraid of you Okay, I, I, I hate to, like, beat a dead horse, but it's just going to keep going back to that story, I think, of the guy who uh, was trying to tell everybody you're not safe and you need to get out of here now. So let's see what, what's happening here. If there's a message that you need to share, that I need to share, strength, Leo, energy, the two of cups is hiding the two of swords. Okay, can you see the smoke? I don't think you can see it. Where there is smoke, there are flames. Six of swords in the reverse. Nine of pentacles. Eight of wands in the reverse. I feel like you, if you're in a new relationship or just any kind of a relationship, seems like it's a little bit newer or maybe some kind of new stage has recently begun. I feel like you are in a really happy place. And that's really important for you to stay in that happy place and just be your happy self, even though there's somebody else who's unhappy about you being in a happy place. So this may be that you recently started dating or you married or you just got involved with someone who broke up with someone else and the, the person who got broken up with is watching you guys very intently. It's like, hello, who are you and why are you with my person, quote unquote? It's not their person. It's not their person. 
this is probably more than a flirtation. For some of you, it's just starting out, it's a flirtation, and it's like taking steps up the stairs. You're like, well, this is a, you're cute, and then you're like, oh, you're funny, and they look at you, and they're like, oh, you're cute, and you're funny, right? And you're both discovering this about each other, and then like, oh, you're interesting, and oh, you're smart, and oh, blah, blah, and you're stepping it up together, and somebody's watching, and they're like, why, why are you climbing steps with my person? And you're like, this is not your person, I, this is a single person. So this is a person who gets to decide who their person is. I hope this is coming clear. The hangman, Pisces energy in the reverse. The eight of swords. The king of swords. The six of pentacles in the reverse. The tower in the reverse. Eight of cups. Temperance. The three of cups in the reverse. Um, so I feel like somehow, some way... Somebody's going to break it off with you. It's probably more of a friend who's going to break it off with you. Maybe you know your person's ex and you're like not going to be friends anymore. Maybe you were friends at one time. Whoever you're dealing with is trying to, um, they're going to come across as somebody who is all-knowing and all-powerful and try to manipulate you by taking money away. Um, it was never enough to begin with. They've been breadcrumbing you. They're going to keep breadcrumbing you. And it's like putting a little carrot in front of your nose, but you ain't a donkey. You don't eat fucking carrots. Okay, you're a, a king, you're a king, and probably you may be a hunter of some sort, and that doesn't need to be like an actual hunter, I am not a murderer of <laughs> animals, I'm, there, a lot of wanted to come through there when I said I'm not a murderer, and then immediately there was like, well, you've killed all of those bugs, and you've killed all of those things, I'm like, okay, fine, I'm a murderer, but not a murderer, and that... I, there's a lot of gray area coming through today. There's a lot of this. It is what it is. Um, you are dealing with somebody who it seems to me they're going to try to come forward and be quite severe and withdraw what they provided to you, which was never enough in the first place. And so the withdrawal is not a big deal. Um, whoever you're dealing with is probably like on your mind a little bit and it's a good idea for you just stop I would not consider and reconsider whatever you've said or however you've handled this individual feels like it's like this situation is handled for now let it be I feel like they're going to end up like somehow walking away from you they, they think they're being clever they're totally confused they have no idea what's going on they're trying to get you to help them and instead of just asking you for help they're like I don't want you in my life Okay, whatever, let them go. <laughs> and I feel like you're, you're definitely in this energy where it's a whatever, whatever. You're being ridiculous and you're not going to deal with these like penny any bullshit. Penny any, penny any, penny ante. The penny ante is when you, uh, my parents used to play bridge. They'd get together and you play with pennies and you're like, it's a it's a game that you play for fun. You're not like getting upset over the fact that I just lost 10 cents, right? There's 100 pennies on the table and somebody is getting really I want the 100 pennies and you're like, "You know what? Here you go. Have the the 100 pennies. Have the funny pennies. Have the 100 pennies. Bye, Felicia. You can have your pennies. Now I'm leaving." Um and and they don't really want you to leave. It's a it's really immature. It's stupid and annoying. And I don't appreciate even like just reading these cards because you're dealing with somebody who's, um, they're a total liar and they're, they're totally confused. They have no idea what's going on and they pretend like you're the one who doesn't know what's going on. Um, the young man. The young man that I dealt with who was trying to destroy my reputation, who ended up destroying his own reputation because he was such a, you know, obviously dishonest vicious, violent, aggressive, phony. Um, this was a guy, a white guy, born very wealthy from like Colorado or Oregon or something, who was like a way far left, um, only people of color matter. He's a rich little white boy and like praised himself. And all of that only people of color matter nonsense was all lies to put his own self up on a pedestal and then him coming to me and being like you I don't even want to say it because this is gross but he was accusing me of these all of these things and people freaking believed it <laughs> because it was all 
political smoke and mirrors. You may be dealing with stuff like this where you're dealing with a really gnarly character, but everybody can see that the gnarly character is the one with all kinds of issues, that you're not the one with issues. Um, it does seem that you may want to walk away from the situation. I feel like you got involved with somebody who, very from the start, this was somebody who was a little bit difficult for you. You really had to hold your own energy back in order to deal with this person. So they probably made you angry or they piss you off. They frustrate you. They com consistently violate boundaries. But you were like, well, they're out of control uh, because they have like serious mental emotional issues. So I'm going to help them get under control because maybe you in the past had your own issues. You got those under control. So you know that it's possible. And so then you're like, all right, well, this person has issues. They are kind of reminding me of my old self. So I'm going to help them. I'm going to work with them. But this person is not you. They are not strong like you are. They look up to you. They want to be like you. They could be as strong, but instead of trying to be like you, they're just trying to tank you down. <laughs> I'm not going to learn from you. I'm just going to destroy you. And then I'll be happy. No. You thinking about the Nazis and the Jews? Because I am. Um, instead of learning from you, I'm just going to destroy you. Did that work? No. The Jewish people are highly successful people all over the planet. No matter where you go, you're going to have Jewish folk who are doing exactly what they want to be doing. They're with the protections. As long as they're not being vicious and um, monstrous their own selves, as long as you know, you're not participating in this um, throwing mud game because when you throw mud you, people throw mud at you right um yeah it looks like you're going to walk away from this person they know they screwed up they know that you are someone who is exalted and you're i feel like you're not gonna bother speaking with this person um whoa okay so as soon as you cut this person out of your life you're going to get some massive abundance come your way and uh, you just you're gonna you want to get rid of this individual and these three kings we three kings of da da plum plum we three kings uh, in town you're cutting someone out of your life so that you can have somebody else in your life and be and that be very comfortable. So that kind of brings me back to the dynamic of like, I don't know, maybe you're best friends with someone and they got a divorce and now you're dating their husband. And like you and the best friend are just going to be like, bye bye, because obviously there's all kinds of jealousies and confusions getting involved here. Um, your strengths at this time are... Yeah, not dealing with any confusion or frustration, just recognizing that um, people's issues are their own. And you're going to have a new choice. There's somebody brand new heading toward you. Uh, I feel like there is some, there's just, there's a lot of anxiety probably about some, this particular individual and you may be nervous about what they're saying. about what they're saying the leo energy is coming through big yeah impulsiveness egotism isolation in the reverse generosity and flirtation in the reverse you may have gotten involved with this person because you thought you could help them and in some way that was really appealing to your ego but turns out i don't know no good deed goes unpunished um and I would also not fall for any games because if you give a lot to somebody and they come at you with some kind of an attitude of you don't give me enough, that person is playing you like a fiddle. Like a fiddle. And you feel guilty for not giving them more. Meanwhile, you're giving them way too much. It's a... I, the word that most people would use to describe that dynamic is narcissistic. Somebody is trying to play your guilt... Meanwhile, they're the ones who are guilty. Also, for one or two of you, I feel like there's somebody who's in love with you in the spirit world. And they regret letting you go. 
they're not going to, it's like they're going to stay in your head until you and they come to an understanding together of how you're going to get back together. That's very esoteric. If this is a person who passed away, or if there's a person who passed away, and they've come back to you, like Raphael, for me, then you guys are going to work together to understand what really happened. I feel like you're, you're, you need to do a lot of listening, and it's not going to be the kind of listening that you can just like pick up the phone or turn on the radio. This is, yeah, you're going to have to be really playful and recognize that there's some kind of, um, this is weird. Maybe it's only for one or two. There's a character in your dreams that keeps coming through and they're fun. Um, and it's like this character in your dreams brings you the same message that some creature in this real world will bring to you i don't think the creature is a person i think the creature is going to be like a butterfly messages from butterflies i know for me when all of my dogs when my dogs pass there's suddenly butterflies everywhere and i feel like that goes from like the one um yeah the moon dancer my one poochie see the smoke do you see the smoke if you can't see it. My one poochie, Gigi, is Fifi's twin sister, and she passed. I had to put her to sleep, and her body was had become more of a rock, and it was really weighing her down, and she was unhappy. You know, she stopped eating and drinking and all of it, so I had to put her down, and it was very, very sad. But it was here at my house, which was lovely, and as soon as she like went to sleep once and for all, very sad, um, all white butterflies all white butterflies everywhere and they came out and it was like hi mom I want you to know that I'm free now that I can fly free this is really sad got all kinds of tears um I, I'm, I'm free it doesn't hurt and I'm flying around you I love you <laughs> these are they're God, it's really sad. It's really, really sad. Um, this is someone who really, really loves you. And they just, they want to play. They want to play with you. So if you feel, start if you start feeling spirits around you, do not get afraid. Do not get afraid. Um, who, whoever is sending you spirits, and maybe on the physical planet, is like someone sending you messages. Whoever's sending you um, messages loves you. They want you to feel fun and joy and like tickling. Um, you have nothing to fear but fear itself. The regeneration. So somebody's coming back to life. I don't mean to make these readings so esoteric maybe I'll come back today and do one that's just like how's the weather <laughs> definitely wind coming in lots of wind there may even be a tornado that's like a wet wet tornado something happening underground they're drilling they're drilling for things underground they're drilling in the mountains um as a survivor you are unparalleled no matter what happens you can adapt embrace your transformation put on your new cloak you're a master of regeneration uh, for some of you, this was all about you. You may have, in one way or another, it's like you died. Remember Princess, the Princess Bride? I died that day. Wesley. I died that day. And there's the pretending, I don't know, go back and watch the Princess Bride. Because you probably died that day. And now you're, you're back to life. And, I mean, rebirth and regeneration. That's a heavy, heavy, you died that day, and now you came back to life. Um, you were a caterpillar. You crawled into your little cocoon. Now you come out the other end, and you're a butterfly. And the lizard, and for some of you, it was more of a, a burning down. You got burned. You were burned in the fires. You were torched to the ground. You're the phoenix. You're rising. It's time to embrace the transformation and rise. The lizard cannot be burned. 
the salamander is, a, at least in the tarot cards, is the symbol for the king of wands. And um, the, it can, cannot be burned. You cannot be burned to the ground. It's the, um, and it came up once before, if you've been burned to ash, baby, ash don't burn. You know what happens to ash? Phoenixes rise out of it. Phoenix, 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 Arizona was written on one of these cards. I, I saw the word Phoenix somewhere here. Did I show you the word Phoenix? I don't know. I don't mean to be rambly. I hope that it's not too rambly. Um, I'm going to go through and just call out numbers and astrological symbols and then see if there's anything else that wants to come through. The Five of Pentacles, the Three of Pentacles in the reverse, the Nine of Cups, the Five of Swords. Mm. This is almost as though you would like for somebody to... <laughs> Some, it's, I am done. This card says I am done. Five of Swords. Yeah, don't break up with anyone. And I, I don't think that that's a love relationship. It may be for one or two. It's more of like a friendship. Somebody who you've been like friendly with. The weakness here is you're trying to break up with them. I feel like you can just wait and they're going to say this is done. And they're saying that in order to uh, make you feel as though you've been left out, cut out, like you've lost some great something. It's not working. And it's actually you getting all of your wishes come true for this person is going to walk away. They're going to cut their own selves out of your life, out of the picture. And um, you may actually feel bad about that for just a second. But don't. <laughs> the five of wands and the ten of pentacles in the reverse the empress in the reverse don't feel bad they're they're playing on this feeling it just goes back to that tactic of like trying to deny you something with this idea that whatever they're denying you is this massively important seriously lucrative thing it's not it's not worth 10 cents uh, it's penny ante it's the penny ante and there, there's manipulation and frustration and conviction. And I feel like if this person wants to mess with you, like at least the energy that I'm feeling right now, anyone tries to mess with me, I'm going to slit your freaking... It's like this is the boundary. And if your nose comes across, I'll just slice the nose. No worries. Your toes come across, I'll slice the toes. And they're going to go away and be like, you, you're mean. That's awful. You sliced off the tip of my nose. You sliced off the tip of my toes. Say, Biatch, I told you, this is the boundary. You don't come beyond this boundary. Do you understand? If you don't get that, then I'm going to keep on slicing off parts of you. <laughs> it's so severe. It's strong. It's absolutely where it belongs. This is like... Okay, definitely the masculine energy coming through, and there's this God force coming through. This is not a devil... I'm going to cut off your nose. If you stick your nose in my business, you're going to lose it because I have told you. And, and this is like, there it could be somebody in your life that you need to deal with this way. These are the rules. These are the boundaries. Not your rules, not your boundaries, mine. My rules. Ooh, I got new rules. Now count them. Who's it? Dua Lipa? These are my rules. These are my boundaries. This is not about your rules and your boundaries. You can have whatever rules or boundaries you want. You're not going to violate my rules and my boundaries because if you violate something of mine, I will not, will not be dealing with you. And I feel like this person is like, they're like, oh, fine, you're going to end up all alone. <laughs> I, I gave you so much and all you've been doing is dancing around and having fun and you're going to end up on your own because I'm the best thing that ever happened to you. Meanwhile, it's penny anti bullshit. Penny anti bullshit, okay? Um, impulsiveness, principle, achievement in the reverse, companionship in the reverse, protection in the reverse. There's another story that wants to come through about um, being part of a group of people that is managing to accomplish a thing and you are you, it's like you're part of this group but you're not part of the group you don't really belong and 
in physical terms or in some aspect, it's like this group is high achieving and you've been left out because you're not high achieving. But the fact is you've been protected. You've been protected is why you feel that you're on your own. And these people who are looking at you don't get it. They're like, wait a second, look. In this world, success has a very particular definition. Success means having a three-room, um, three-level house mansion with a white picket fence. It means having three and a half kids and two and a half cars. It means going on vacation once a year to Las Vegas or Hawaii or Colorado skiing. It means working all the time and getting no sleep. It means sacrificing your true happiness for the perception of happiness. And these people are saying this to you and they're like, now you need to get in line. Why are you not doing what everybody else is doing? You should be miserable. You should be self-hating and you should be trying to get in line and be just like the rest of us who are actually truly miserable, but we look happy. <laughs> Um, and I feel like you're in this spot where you're like, yeah, no, I, it's the matrix. It's the standing outside the matrix. And when they, when Neo and it's not Morpheus, I can't remember the woman's name. When Neo and the woman get, just because they see the matrix doesn't mean that all of a sudden the matrix changes. They're still having to go back. Like, don't they wear these like gray, blue uniforms and like they eat gruel? And they're basically homeless or houseless, whatever you want to call it. Um, but they are exalted. I feel like there's some kind of a dynamic of that going through for you. And um, they see you as someone who has been given absolutely everything and they wonder like how how did you do that how did you do that are you a witch are you a wizard are you some kind of magical like what are you how did you do that because you seem to be living this life of like true balance and they are stressed out and they're barely managing to make it work and they are exhausted and they are achieving the dream you're not doing any of those things but you're living this really, really nice life. So what's up with that? Mm, I feel like you are not telling. <laughs> I think you worked for this. I think you worked for this. And you're like, number one, it, 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 it's your path. So, oh, look. And there's, and there's Mahiel, Gabriel, Oliam. Dape, Gabriel, where's Raphael? Um, where's Raphael? I don't know. E, but yeah, you're. I feel like you're in this. Like, I worked really hard for this, and I, I don't know. You followed the breadcrumbs. It's not like you're like you did something that anybody else couldn't do. Um, you're, it's like you're special because you did it. That opportunity is open to everyone. You took the opportunity. You did it. Okay, and it and brings in these two things. So there's, you can always choose to live your life in terms of superficial stuff or you can actually live a good life. And in spiritual terms, there are some people who you can meditate all day, all day, every single day, and still be emotionally unwell, mentally unwell, socially unfit. You can still be sociopathic or narcissistic, self-centered, egotistical, arrogant, and meditate all day long. It's a question about what you're meditating on. You can meditate for five minutes a day, and if you're in those five minutes actually giving yourself over to spirit, putting yourself up in the Akashic record, you're actually uh, taking off your own mask, 
you're taking off the costumes and you're just looking at what is really in there at yourself, even if it's five minutes a day, you are very likely a far more exalted human being than the person who meditates all day, who meditates on their own greatness, on their own narcissism, on their own injuries, on their traumas, on their hatred. You meditate on darkness. You're just going to dig yourself deeper and deeper into the darkness we're all of us human and you can have a positive thought or a negative thought and you can spend a lot of time with your negative thoughts and still be not digging a hole into darkness. The question is how honest are you with yourself? Reading tarot cards doesn't make you a good person or a spiritual person. Uh, reading palms, being able to predict, predict the future, being a channel. These do not make you a good person. They don't put you above other people. Um, they put you inside of yourself. All they do is open the window or they, they remove, they like, they put the mirror in front of your face. And they also, it's a special mirror. That it's a mirror that you see yourself, but you can also see through. And you start to recognize that you weigh this, the way you see the world is a reflection of yourself. So if you go out into the world and you start seeing people um, as like, uh, they're they're to be toyed with because they're no good. They're they're very worthless humans. Um, they don't know what you know. Chances are that you are all of the things that you're putting on those other people to make yourself feel superior. So there, I feel like that was a message like for one person. Very likely you're dealing with someone who sees themselves as a spiritual magical force, and but they don't actually. They don't actually do anything. They don't actually do anything. We've got here personal choice. Close your eyes. What animal do you imagine? What strengths are they known for? What wisdom do they share? Embrace these qualities. There's a lot that wants to come through and it's really deep. And I feel like I would need to like go and do some research and take some time to write a paper about this. Um, so maybe you want to do that. Raven, Shaman, you're, you are the creator and magician. Use your gifts for good. There's power in your wisdom and words. Connect with the elemental spirits and glide through the void. Claim your place as keeper of the mysteries. Okay, so I'm going to stop talking. I feel like I've said everything that needs to be said for now. Um, there's a hummingbird under that, so joy coming in. We've got here, I said I would read out the... Okay, so yeah, like I said, not too many major arcana coming through in general. We do have heavy Pisces energy. We've got the uh, all the kings. So some of that Aries, almost Aries, the, the, the three kings. The king that was missing is the king of pentacles. Anyway, Aries energy coming through. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio... Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. We've got here Virgo, very heavy with practicality. Capricorn, Taurus. Yeah, the giver, lots and lots of earth energy. It's as usual. It's magical time to be outside, to be growing things and planting things. The moon dancer, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Uh, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn energy. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. It's very high priestess energy protection you got leo aries leo sag there's definitely somebody protecting you some of you they're protecting you from your own impulsiveness which is awesome uh so don't be too impulsive anyway <laughs> generosity flirtation egotism and then somebody is trying to don't forget there's this game going on where they want to give you a lot and then take it away and and somehow they're gonna like maybe they're trying to trigger you so that you will walk around and be like I'm the shit because this person um they offered like I'm worth so much I don't know there's this game they're gonna try and give you a lot and then take it back take it away from you so that you feel the ouch it's not gonna work so it's not gonna work because you have your own uh nine one one Okay, so what is this 911? I'm just gonna just take one second look here. What is the 911, please? What is this like? There's some kind of a battle. 
And the Eight of Wands in the reverse, the, the smoke. The Hierophant in the reverse. Page of Swords in the reverse. Four of Pentacles in the reverse, Nine of Wands. Eight of Swords, Two of Swords. This is not a big deal. It, it may want to seem like a big deal. <clears throat> You're going to be getting a message and somebody's going to come in and tell you something. Not right now. Um, in a minute. Tomorrow. Next reading, someone's going to come to you. And they're going to say something to you that makes you real nervous about what's going to be happening in the future. A little bit of that idea about the, the, the homeless guy coming through. It would be like, you need to get out of here now. Um, and you're like, it's not enough. That doesn't make sense. It, it's not enough. Um... There's major, major, major wind coming through like a tornado. But I'm the only message that I'm getting here is that I need to clean up and go away, walk away and leave this alone. So I, all I can tell you is that it will be coming in and it, it may not come from me. You're, you're going to be getting a message and it's going to, on one hand, if you're not listening to your intuition, it's going to stress you out and make you very anxious. On the other hand, if you're listening to your intu intuition and you are... I was going to say something else. In trust, trust yourself. You don't need to trust other people if you trust yourself. You're going to know. You're going to know that this is actually hugely beneficial and it's like setting you free. So um, could be a feeling of a double-edged sword, a little bit of the best day, worst day, but that's not today and that's not in this 24 to 48 hours. I'll definitely come back with a message that's going to follow up on this one. And I feel like I'm going to have something for it. I'm going to have something to say. I just need to figure it out. And the cards are like, you need to go away and figure this out. You need to let it go. Go away and figure this out. So I'm going to go and make some candles. I hope that you have a wonderful day. If you figured it out, please do let me know what's coming through. But there's rebirth. There's regeneration. It's coming back to life. It's coming back to life. In fact, it has already come back to life. You just didn't notice. <laughs> you just didn't notice. They're already back. The emperor. The sun. And now it's out for good. The emperor and the sun. One of you is taking on a leadership position that you've been meant to be taking on this position for a long, long time. Somebody doesn't like it because they feel like that's their position and you're going to be kicking them out of it. It's already yours. You just don't know it. Probably really cloudy for you today. Some kind of a stupid psalm bitch is... is their energy surrounds you. They're not going to go away. And it's like they're, they're, they're playing the stupid-ass game. I would, if I were you, step into that energy of um, this is the boundary. And any part of yourself that comes beyond this boundary, I will chop it off. And if that is your head, by head, you're dead. Done. <laughs> I love you guys. Sending you love, light, and ashe. See you again soon. Bye.